we talk about the difference between government and the private sector, and when they're the same people, how do we distinguish? Well, that, that's an issue. I mean, uh, Paulson was the head of Goldman Sachs. Uh, Goldman Sachs was very proud a year ago this month, I believe, in Fortune magazine to say, hey, we're very proud of, of packaging these uh, subprime mortgages and selling them. The question in that issue, or in, on that issue, becomes how, how come the rating services rated those pieces of paper set at such a high level that if I'm a small bank trust officer and, I, and I'm buying a package of mortgages that are rated A or A plus, I have to trust that. I haven't got time to look at it. And, and I'm, uh, from Joe's perspective, isn't, aren't these the very people with who you were talking about? It's, if you're right, it's too clubby, it's too chummy, it's, it's the lobbyists. When I made the remark about marketing a while ago, I mean, it's really a, a function of, it, it's, there's too much of it. We are, we have become expert at marketing ideas and things that aren't necessarily good for us. And these folks who are in charge, um, they, if they don't lobby for this group, they lobby for that group. There is a very clubby, chummy feeling about the people who run these things that really needs to change. So let's, let's bring in our professor of eco-economics and ask him to weigh on this. Well, uh, before I do that, I would like to correct something that you said, Terry. I did not put this on tonight. It was a, there were a lot of people who came together to, to put this together. So I just Thank want to correct that one thing. Uh, the, the second thing I have a question for, I'm also a small business owner, and I have never paid taxes based on my gross income ever in my life. Uh, so what are, are you? Uh, so I'm confused. I am confused. Well, are you John saying that is confused? You a lot. Of I'm, I'm very. Uh, am I going to start paying? I mean, no. do I need to get a different accountant? Excuse or am me. I Excuse me. I, I listened to the interview with one of McCain's or with one of Obama's senior advisors, and the question was specifically: Is that two hundred fifty thousand dollars gross, or is that two hundred fifty thousand dollars net? Her response was gross, and that was not a, a, an Obama campaign person. So it's two hundred fifty thousand dollars gross. Which scares me should scare you. I just have a hard time believing that. I do too. That I, I heard it. And, and it isn't. Okay. Well, it I'm well, sorry. It could have been wrong. Well, I'll grant you that. But this is one of Obama's advisors. If that's the kind of advice he's passing out, it, 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 uh, millions of people heard it. See, it, there is a political component. Stand there. You might have something to say. That would be interesting. I'd like to hear Okay. There is a political component to all of this, and that is simply. We have, um, we have a way of doing things that, that is a little backwards when it comes to taxation, and especially when it comes to a political season. Republicans for the longest time, and I don't mean to be totally partisan about this, but their position is they're going to tax you, they're going to tax you, they're going to tax you. And I don't care how many times Barack Obama and all of his surrogates stand up and say, no, no, no. You've got it wrong, just because you say we're going to tax you doesn't mean we're going to tax you. Go to his website, read his plan. It's not going to happen that way. The, the tax system that he's talking about is extremely fair. What McCain doesn't tell you is that he doesn't want to eliminate the Bush tax cuts on the wealthy. That's a huge hit on the middle class. That means that the middle class is going to have to pick up the slack because ExxonMobil is getting a multi-billion dollar tax break under the Bush-McCain plan. And as long as we keep having business as usual, we'll keep having the same problems that we're having. Let's get on one more. Yeah, just one, this one, quick thing. Thing. one thing that could change overnight and would add dramatically to the cash flow, the revenues of this country, something probably no one in this room has thought about. Maybe they have, maybe they have. Tax foundations. You know, the, the biggest guys out there, Warren Buffett, who, who admits to only paying 17% in taxes because he has a foundation, and he does everything through his foundation, and he obviously targets giving, which is fine, except so does the federal government. So tax Warren Buffett's foundation, ta tax Bill Gates' foundation, they use their foundations as tremendous tax dodges. 
I'm, I'm all for everybody paying their fair share. So tax the foundations, but don't give me the bleeding heart story that these foundations are doing such great work that they, they shouldn't pay taxes. No, they absolutely should pay taxes. Let the government decide. If we're moving in that direction and the government thinks they know better. Here's a, here's a question I won't ask you to answer, but churches too? That was just what I was going to say. They do good work. How about churches? Do I ask you not to answer that? Let's take another, uh, another question from our audience here. What is your name and where are you from, please? Thank you. I'm Lisa. And I have an office here in Visalia. And I thank you for the opportunity to for me to stand here and scream about my biggest concern. I think everybody will agree with me today, will you not, that we've got to put the brakes on the economic free fall. What is contributing to the free fall is everybody screaming, we're going to crash, we're going to crash, save your money, hold your money, uh, reduce the size of your business. That guarantees that you're going to have less of the market, you're not going to earn as much, and there aren't going to be people out there able to spend money on your business. The media is contributing to this. I was appalled. It's like screaming fire in a crowded theater. The friends know the headline is this big. Panic. We don't need that. Gentlemen, what can we do to get some infer inspiration from FDR. He said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Great Gentlemen, question. how can we overcome the fear? Great question. It is a very good question, and I must tell you, thank you for asking it, because we, we do scream in my office. We scream every time we see a government official on TV, because the market will be trying to have a good day, and as soon as Paulson, Bush, or uh, Bernanke speak, the market goes down about 200 points. I don't know why somebody, if we're so good at marketing, Joe, why doesn't somebody in Washington at least call these birds and say, well, you know what, wait till after the market closes, you know? Give it a chance to digest. You want to answer that, the marketing thing? You can only sell poop for so long. <laughs> after a while, somebody will go, hey, this is poop. <laughs> This, is, this goes all the way back. We used to laugh about Alan Greenspan and say, no, Alan Greenspan creating victims to save. You know? uh, but, uh, but, but the reality is that, that there is a, the system is actually going to be a wash in cash here. The question is, how does that get to where it needs to be? How does the average guy out there who bought his home at 300000 is now worth 200000 and has a mortgage that's stepping up, not just this year, but those step-ups take place again next year? This is, this is going to roll forward for another year at least. We're going to take one more quick break here before we continue with our questions and answers. This is Quality of Life on Valley Public Radio, and we will be back with...